Hey guys, this is the second of my power on but no display motherboards. This is actually a Lenovo motherboard. You can see the model number in the description. So what I'm going to do is try and power it on. As you can see, I've got my HDMI connected. I actually have a USB adapter that's compatible with this and I have a power button. So I'm just going to put this heatsink onto the CPU and press the power button and let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got a light. I can feel the processor starting to heat up. But nothing else is happening. We're getting nothing on the screen and no signs of life. So let's scan this to the screen and take some measurements. I scanned the motherboard to the screen and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna start down at our USB-C port. So I plug in my USB-C adapter and we're going to start taking some measurements. Now I would usually take a measurement at the input jack itself to make sure that we're getting the correct voltage. However, with these USB-C jacks, the pins are really, really small, so I don't really like taking measurements there. What I'm going to do first is try and find the power delivery controller, the PD controller I see, and we're going to take some measurements there to see if we're getting the correct voltage. So is there any of these ICs on the board here that looks like a PD controller? Well, I'm sure many of you spotted it already. We have a TPS 65988 IC right here. This is a PD controller. So what we're gonna do is take some measurements here and we'll know pretty quickly whether this IC is working and whether the system is getting the correct input voltages. And before taking measurements at our TPS 65988, it's useful to know the pinouts. So I've marked in the pinouts for that IC to try and make things a bit clearer. And yes, that did take me quite a while. So with my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, I put my black probe to ground and I took some measurements around the pins of this IC. The data sheet says that our TPS65988 is a dual port USB Type-C and USB PD controller. If we look to, at the description, it says, upon cable detection, the TPS65988 communicates on the CC wire using the USB PD protocol. When cable detection and USB PD negotiation are complete, the TPS65988 enables the appropriate power path. So basically what that means is initially when you plug it in, you will read five volts. Once it negotiates successfully with the charger, that gets boosted up to something like 19 or 20 volts, whatever the appropriate voltage is to power any particular laptop. And these are the measurements that I took. At pin number 30, which is our internal 1.8 volts LDO, I measured at this capacitor here and I found that it measured 1.799 volts. So it looks like our internal 1.8 volts LDO is online and that indicates that our PD controller IC is functioning. Down at pin number 3 and pin number 4, which is VBUS2, I measured at this capacitor right here and I found that we had 19.90 volts. So it looks like our PD controller has successfully negotiated with our charger and is giving us the appropriate voltage to power this motherboard, which is 19.9 volts. So our PD controller IC looks like it's working and we have the correct input voltage of 19.90 volts. Where do we go next? Well, next I want to try and find the battery management IC. So let's see if we can locate that on the motherboard. Looking around my motherboard, I found this IC PU101, which is a BQ25700A. And if we look up online, we find out that that is a battery management IC. So if we zoom in on it, and I will mark out the pins for you so you can see clearly what is going on. I found a data sheet online for our BQ25700A battery management IC and in that data sheet there is an application diagram that shows us how we might expect this battery management IC to work. BQ25700A takes an input of between 3.5 volts and 24 volts and does two things. Number one, it charges the battery. Now, I obviously don't have a battery with this motherboard, I just have a motherboard on its own, so we're not going to be able to check for this. But the other thing that it does is it creates a lower VSYS voltage that it sends down to all of our secondary circuits. So we need to check that we have the correct input coming in here, and we need to check that we have the correct output on our VSYS pin. With my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, I took the following measurements. So on pins 2 and 3, 
which these pins are measured across the current sense resistor on the input to this IC. I measured 19.90 volts here at this capacitor, which is connected to pin two. So we are getting the correct input voltage of 19.90 volts. On pin 28, reg N, I'm getting a measurement of 6.00 volts. This is an internal LDO, but the fact that I can measure that is an indication that our battery management IC is functioning correctly. But the most important measurement we want to take here is pin 22, which is our VSYS. Now I had to measure this at the pin itself, but I measured a very stable 9.20 volts. So it looks like our VSYS power voltage is correct and online, and that is going down to all of our other secondary circuits. So the first of those secondary circuits that we should check is our 3.3 volts always on power. Now, as you can see here from our schematic, this PU201, which is an SYX198BQNC IC, accepts a B plus voltage. This is gonna be essentially our VSYS voltage as its input and it's going to produce two output voltages. So we have on pin five an LDO three volts and we also have on our LX a higher current three volts. So let's see if we can find PU201. This is PU201. I'm sorry I didn't have time to Photoshop out all of the dirt like I normally would, but these are the pinouts for that IC. So as we saw earlier, we have our input on pin 8, so we should be expecting to see our VSYS power rail here. We should be measuring 9.20 volts. That's actually tied to our enabled pin, pin 7, in case anybody's wondering how these are all on the same track. We saw that on the schematic earlier on. So what we need to check on the outputs are pin 5, LDO, so we should be measuring something like 3.3 here at this capacitor, which is connected to pin 5. And at pin 10, we should be measuring 3.3 volts here also. So let me show you the measurements that I took. So these are the measurements that I took. As you can see, I measured 9.20 volts here at this capacitor, which is connected to our input pin. So we've got the correct input voltage. On pin 5, I measured 3.29 volts, which is close enough to 3.3 volts. So that's also on line. And finally, on pin 10, we measured 3.34 volts here, which means that our higher current 3.3 volts is also on line. At this point, we've established that our PD controller has successfully negotiated with our charger. We're getting the correct input voltage of 19.90 volts. Our battery management IC is also working. We're getting our VSYS power rail of 9.20 volts and our 3.3 volts always on is present. We can see that it's being produced by PU201. So what I want to check next is all of those other secondary power rails. So we're going to check at each of these inductors and see if all of those secondary power rails are coming online quickly go through these. On PL102 I measured 9.30 volts. On PL801 I measured 1.80 volts. On PL610 I measured 1.05 volts. On PL408 I measured 1.07 volts, so these are for the CPU. Uh, at these two inductors right here I measured 0 0.88 volts. On PL403, I measured zero volts. Now that's not necessarily an indication of a fault, but I'm just noting down that zero volts on PL403. These two inductors down here, PL202 is our five volts power rail, and PL201 is the inductor on our three volts power rail, and that measured 3.34 volts. Down at PL203, I measured 5.09 volts here. PL301, I measured 1.22 volts, this is for our RAM. And PL802, I measured 2.50 volts. So it looks like all of our secondary power rails are online. So having confirmed that all of our secondary power rails look to be online, what do we do next? We still don't have any display. Well, this is the list of things I tried next. So first of all, I tried it with different memory. I checked the pins on the dim socket to make sure that none of them had come away from the motherboard. They all looked fine. Second thing I tried was to check with a thermal camera. With a thermal camera, the only thing that was heating up was the CPU. The third thing I tried was to press down on the CPU and likely heat the processor and chipset. That didn't make any difference either. A number of you guys have been suggesting number four, which was to plug in a USB keyboard and check for a caps lock or a num lock key. On this motherboard, I plugged in a keyboard and I couldn't get any response from a keyboard. So the next step is to flash the BIOS IC with a good BIOS ROM if I can get one online. 
Now I made the mistake of assuming that this wind bond I see right here was the bias I see. However, I was quickly corrected online and it's actually this one here. So it's an MXIC 25L25673G. So I'm going to see if we can find a good bias online to reprogram this with. On badcaps.net, I found this post right here in relation to the same L590 motherboard that I'm working on. This is an upload where he says, try this, MX. 25L25673G, which as you can see, corresponds exactly to the number of my bias I see. So let's take that one down and see if that brings this laptop back to life. Okay, so I've connected my CH341A bias programmer to my bias I see. I've opened the AS programmer software. I click the question mark to read the IC. It's detected it successfully. So there it is, MX25L25673G. Now, before reprogramming it, I want to take a copy of the original BIOS. So let's click this right here to read the IC and take a copy of the original BIOS. Having taken a copy of our original BIOS, I now want to reprogram it. So I locate that file that I just took down from badcaps.net. We'll open it and then click this button here to unprotect, erase, program and verify. And this can take quite a few minutes. So with our BIOS chip now reprogrammed, let's try it again. So pressing the power button. Okay, so it's coming on. Let's take a look at the screen. Oh, would you believe it? So that's all that was wrong with it, just a bad BIOS. Okay. Okay, so I didn't get the fan with this. So it's actually shutting down because it's not detecting the fan. But that's certainly further than we were getting earlier on. We're getting the splash screen with Lenovo on it. And it seems like our motherboard is now working. I might just ship this back to the guy I originally bought it from and see if he'll send me another one. Uh, because he actually still has the chassis for this laptop. So um, if he puts this motherboard back into his laptop, he'll have a fully working laptop. So that's all that it was, just a corrupt bias file. And when we reprogram it, it brings it back to life. That's all I got for this week, guys. I have three more of these laptops with a power on but no display situation. Tune in next week and we'll work on the third one of those.